Welcome back. August sees a number of major sporting events, the Olympics among them. It's also the date for the Aussie Rules International Cup. One of the countries involved will be Nauru, which has high hopes. After all, AFL is its national sport. Amazingly, the world's smallest island nation hasn't had an Aussie Rules League for almost two years after their local tournament was scrapped due to violence on and off pitch. Al Jazeera's Dan Nolan has more. Welcome to Nauru's national football ground. There's very little grass and the sideline is littered with car wrecks, but the enthusiasm is endless. They don't play the world game here in the Republic of Nauru, but rather the Australian game, AFL or Aussie Rules as it's also known. I think Nauruans are uh, naturally uh, very uh, passionate and have got a lot of aggression and of course uh, natural strength. Uh, combine those in a contact sport like AFL, you can get uh, uh, quite a spectacle. Nauru's sports minister, Matthew Batsua, says Australian football has been Nauru's number one sport since it was introduced here in the 60s. But harnessing the passion has been a problem. The local competition was shut down because of too much violence, partly due to coaches reminding their players of generational grudges. So they, the players end up approaching the game almost like a civil war. They're not going to play footy, they're going to defend the honour of the district and the clubs and the colours. And uh, I think that then leads to you know, a lot of emotion. This footage shows the game in 2006 that brought an end to the competition. After one too many on-field incidents, the spectators invaded the pitch to attack their opponents. It degenerated into a battle of rock throwing between fans and players, but sometimes it would become even more dangerous. They can fight, they can drive cars into it and everywhere. Drive cars on mm, the field? Yep. Really? Yep. We've seen that, we've had that as well. Drive cars on the field, chasing the players around. Makes it tough to play a game of footy. <laughs> yep. Now the only football on Nauru is trial matches for the national team as they prepare for the Australian Football International Cup in August. Oh, yes. To ensure team unity, only players with clean records have been selected, which means the average age is just 21. Once the boys are together, especially when they're doing something for our country, it's another different thing. The boys uh, have, you know, they have to change to get used to each other. And all this rivalry thing will just have to be in another time. <clears throat> so no fights at training? No fights, no fights at training or anything. It's working so far. There's harmony in the squad, both on and off the field, as they strive for victory at the International Cup. In the interests of avoiding lopsided scores, Australia won't be among the 15 nations competing but that doesn't reduce the pressure on Nauru's youngsters to perform. This is a big one, so, so this is the first time I'm playing for Nauru. This is not the community now, so this is for Nauru, so it feels like you have everything on your shoulders, so yeah. Nauru may be the world's smallest island nation, but nearly all of its 10,000 residents are passionate supporters. Even though there hasn't been a local competition for close to two years, these players are still considered as celebrities. They hope to use that status to help their fundraising here on the island, but they're still desperate for international sponsorship. The local airline will provide free flights to Australia, but they still need money for accommodation, meals and transfers. If they find the funding, the message for their opponents is clear. Be alert, no will be coming. <laughs> Dan Nolan, Al Jazeera, Nauru. It's a familiar story. The talented young athlete who makes some wrong choices and ends up in prison. Many see their hopes of sporting stardom dashed. Yet Jamie Lawrence is one of the few success stories. The former Jamaican international spent time in jail before football gave him a second chance in life. Since his release, Lawrence has worked hard to educate young people, telling them how he went from prison to the Premier League. When you first get into trouble, it's a big bravado thing, and that when you get nicked by the old girl, and you think, oh yeah, I'm one of the boys. You think you're untouchable. 
But when you do finally go to prison, the reality sets in. At that time, I was a one-man crime wave. At the age of 16, life for Jamie Lawrence was full of promise and hope. Living in South London, Jamie was a footballer of genuine potential. He had trials at a number of leading clubs, but after a while, the subsequent rejections began to take their toll. Till about 10, 16 and that, I was quite good when my mum and dad was here. As soon as they left, I went a bit off the rails. So I went out on the road and I'd done things what I weren't proud of, but they made me the person I am today. Jamie spent the next few years in and out of prison, eventually ending up in Camp Hill Prison on the Isle of Wight after being found guilty of aggravated robbery. It would prove to be the turning point in Jamie's life because it was there that he met prison PT instructor, Eddie Walder. Eddie Walder was an absolute legend. And he said to me, listen, I think you can be a pro. For someone to have that belief in you, it gives you the belief in yourself. And I thought, I've got to give myself the best crack I can at this football game and see if I can make it. At that time, we had quite a good prison side, but Jamie was just that little bit different. As we had more teams in to play against him, we began to realise that he did have a special talent. As a player, he was very strong, good distributor of a ball, but also he would never retaliate. Jamie knuckled down and served his time, with football the focus of all his attention. Whatever you asked him to do, he would do it, because he knew that that was going to lead to him playing football in the prison team, going outside, playing football for cows. And we could tell from that moment onwards, he was going to make it. To their credit, the prison authorities recognised that in Jamie, they had someone whose potential shouldn't be allowed to fester within the confines of a prison cell. Jamie soon found himself playing for, rather than against, cows. Dale Young was the manager of that team. When he came out, some of his performances were phenomenal. He was too good for us. The fact that he could come out for an afternoon, and then when he went back into prison, it made him appreciate what he was missing, really. And he changed Cowes Football Club and improved the performance of our players tremendously. News soon spread of the young Jamaican lad from London, and it wasn't long before Jamie achieved his goal of playing professional football. First time I walked out on a football pitch for Sunderland, they played Jail Last Rock. <laughs> so I was buzzing anyway, you know. I had got out of prison, I was only out three months, and then I'm playing at um, a professional ground. Jamie's footballing journey has seen him play at the very highest level of the game in England, playing for the likes of Leicester City, Wigan and Bradford. Add to that 13 caps for Jamaica. Whilst in prison, Jamie realised he wanted to give something back to the game which had turned his life around. With friend and business partner Carl Samuels, the Jamie Lawrence Football Academy was set up. As well as coaching talented youngsters, the academy also plays a huge social function. Football is a way of me getting their attention and then I can talk to them about my past life and my experiences. I've become like a father figure and hopefully I can turn their life around. Prison definitely changed Jamie because, you know, I think without the break in his life at that time, I think he would have continued down the slippery slope and he was fortunate enough to have a skill that was, you know, observed and he was able to come out and, you know, really fulfil his potential. Jamie definitely wants to share the message of his success and to show youngsters that it can be done. And Jamie putting back what he's learned, I think is a really wonderful testament to him. This is more rewarding than anything I've ever done in my life. I'm changing people's lives and, uh, and I was one of those kids. You've got a chance and you've got to make it happen. Only you can make it happen. Now don't forget to check out our website, aljazeera.net forward slash English, where you can find all the latest sport news, watch any of our Sports World stories again, and let us know what you think of the show. But that's it for this edition of Sports World. I'm Farah Ismail, and you're watching Al Jazeera.